Hello everyone, welcome back to ASR, African Stories Realized. This is our weekly review of Red Ink Season 1. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get into it. Episode 3 picks up where the last one left off, in the aftermath of Lucy finding the lifeless body of her friend and business partner Patricia. She panicked and called Cariso, describing the scene and confirming to him that Patricia had no pulse. The police arrived shortly after with Lucy still shaken up. Luckily, KG was there to support and take her home. The following day, she returned to work where the investigation into Patricia's death continued, with Detective Murapedi taking the lead. She interrogated Lucy and stopped short of accusing her of carrying out the murder. Upon realizing that she was being treated like a suspect, Lucy immediately ended the interrogation and left. Meanwhile, in prison, it's revealed that Dean Swayo was faking his illness to avoid Gen Pop, where the other inmates want him dead. Napoleon then called Lucy, who accused him of having something to do with Pat's murder, which he denied. Lucy then went to pay her respects to Pat's family, where Pat's sister revealed that Pat was in an abusive relationship and her partner Tepo was the most likely suspect. This was later confirmed by Detective Morapedi, who informed Lucy that Tepo was on the run. Lucy then received another call from Napoleon where she apologized for accusing him of Pat's murder and promised to help find his brother. However, Denisoya advised her against visiting him for a while. After the call, he bid Goliath farewell and brutally attacked one of the security guards, stabbing him before biting off his ear. The other security guards arrived to stop the assault, beating up Denisoya and throwing him in solitary confinement, which is what he wanted. Meanwhile, KG invited Lucy over for dinner, which she accepted after a little encouragement from her girl Fundi. However, shortly after arriving at Cariso's place, she changed her mind and decided to leave. The episode ends with an intruder attacking Lucy shortly after she arrived at home. They left us on a cliffhanger there, but the season is in full swing. The story is flowing and the actors are delivering. They really took care plotting out this show, and I would say the production quality is impeccable. I like the use of Lucy's commentary when she narrates her thoughts to us, especially since it's a book adaptation. It's something the wife utilized effectively in their first season as well. There's still a mystery over who the unknown sponsor is, but I wouldn't be surprised if he was responsible for Pat's death and Lucy getting ambushed in her home. Lucy's friend Fundi also has a storyline with a new guy going, but I suspect that he might have been sent by the sponsor to infiltrate Lucy's friend group. I'll be back next week with another review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This is ASR for the love of African filmmaking and storytelling.